Don't worry, don't worry. Those are the words from Jose Alvarado, and it speaks to the Pelicans' mindset and where they're at this preseason. But can they get it together after going 0-3 so far? Plus, is it time to change position to prioritize in a trade? It's Tuesday's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Tuesday. We got a couple of things to talk about. Jose giving us one of the quotes of preseason so far, but I do think it says a lot about this team, and I want to look at that. But there also do need to maybe be some changes. Are we looking at big men? Are we looking at a point guard now? I even have a name that someone asked about that maybe you should keep an eye on. And then a couple other transactions that the Pelicans made that will cover some housekeeping business in the third segment of today's show. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here on Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, coming to you like nobody else is. If you want to support the channel, become an everydayer, listen Monday through Friday, tell your friends about the show. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. So Jose Alvarado kind of interrupted Brandon Ingram's media availability as he was asked, being asked by Ali Cassell, the bird rights, you know, what's kind of been the problem in preseason? Why has the offense not looked so good? You know, the turnovers that we really discussed yesterday, I was just on with Gabe Feldman and his podcast, which will be out soon. And we talked about that and why turnovers really do kind of worry me with this team. But what Jose Alvarado came over and looked at Brandon Ingram and said, quote, tell them, We've got to get our ish together, but don't worry, don't worry. And then he basically ran off. We've got to get our stuff together. Don't worry, don't worry. I I like this. I'm going to be honest. I like this. This is a good quote, I think, from Jose Alvarado. And I like that, one, the Pelicans know they're not doing well right now. Because that's what that says, right? They they know they've been disappointing, lackluster, that the offenses look clunky at best right now. But they do think they're kind of trusting the process and they'll clean these things up. Like, that's what I get from that. We know we're not playing well. Things don't look good. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. That type of mentality is what this team needs to have right now. You know, this is... And as like a video game person, like crunch time when you're working on a project is not like a good thing necessarily, but it's like everyone coming together, putting in the extra hours to get this all fixed and shipped and out the door. And it feels like the Pelicans kind of know that this season is crunch time. And I don't mean that in the sense of, you know, an end of game situation when we look at crunch or clutch numbers, which are the same thing. This is, this season is make or break. We have to prove it this year. We need to get this done. And it's not making, there's just no excuses for it, right? Like they're just out there saying like, we know it's not good. We're going to do it. They also have belief that they will. You know, I think a lot of people look at this team and go, they're talented on paper. They should be good if they're healthy, right? That's something I've talked a lot about that way national, a lot of national media views that about the Pelicans. People kind of clued in. This team is good. They should be good. They could get a top four seed, I think, when it comes to things. So the fact that they kind of know that and know that they can get out of this and it's not doom and gloom after a pre- you know, three preseason games, I think is a really big deal. So I'm excited about what they are capable of doing still. You know, they can go out and win games and play good basketball and they're trying to do just that. I also think they know that preseason and what they're doing, and this is something that if you're an everyday or I talked about in yesterday's show, like don't read too much into preseason results. I said this to my friend Charles in my office actually today, and I, I, I can't remember if I said it on the show and maybe I should have, or maybe it just like, dawned on me in the moment when he and I were talking about the team. You know, when you look at preseason, your goals in a preseason game are very different than your goals in a regular season game. 
You don't need to win the preseason game. So you can do different things. You can let mistakes happen, right? That's why they're not running stuff for Zion because you're, you know you're going to be okay and that Zion can do that. It's not like you need live reps with those sorts of things. So they know that they're going through just the process and they're trusting it. And I like that. They'll clean things up, they say. Okay, I'll take, pe- I take people at their word. I believe in the good of humans and that no one's really lying here. No excuses. Just put your head down and do it. I do think to that mentality, though, there can be some downsides, and I want to talk about that too. You know, put your head down and just do it. If we need to score some points, we can score some points. I mean, get the ball to Zion. Okay, let's see it. Do that in the regular season, and it'll work. But the downsides to that are if he's not there, what do you do? You know, is it Brandon Ingram hero ball? Because that's one of those things where that doesn't always work. That's not always great. You know, do you run something different? Do you do whatever? Like, how do you do that? I would have liked to hear that a little bit more and what they're kind of working on. And this, you know, maybe preempted a very good answer on what was honestly like a very good question, I think, with everything. Um, So I don't know. Something about that made me feel good. It just, I don't know. Maybe it's just, I love Jose Alvarado. I gotta hang the jersey up. I will do that. Although I've been thinking about, I'm curious for y'all. Let's go a little off script here. I've been thinking about doing like a green screen behind me, change up the backgrounds, do different things. Do you have thoughts on that? Go look at Locked On Celtics. Go look at Locked On Celtics. My boy, John Krause, my co-host on Wednesdays on Locked On NBA. He has a green screen and I kind of like it. And I'm wondering if that's what I want to do with it all. So I don't know. And then I can put the jersey somewhere else, which would be cool. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Jose Alvarado jersey back. I also still have, and a lot of you have asked about the Dior Jordan that's melting could go back up on the wall. Those two would be there again, as I probably should talk into the mic. Um, So let me know what you think in the comments down below. But something about Jose Alvarado was like calming, reassuring, and that kind of infectious energy he has, I think is so important to the team, right? Like you look at this roster, this team, and this was when I, I put out to the Lockdown Pelicans Insiders Group, and I'll tell you about that after the reset coming up here, you know, uh, put out questions like, what, what do you want to hear about on the show? And a lot of people were like, how important is Jose Alvarado's energy to the team? Seems big, doesn't it? Seems big. <laughs> it's making me feel better, his like presence there. So imagine what it does to the players and their like, supreme trust in him and what he can do to give the team a jolt of energy, whether it's on defense or just being there on offense and trying to make plays too. We got to turn that into a whole segment of like, what is the importance of Jose Alvarado? There's limits to him. I mean that, but he is also a very important player to this team. And you saw it right there with him interrupting Brandon Ingram. Let me know what you think about any of the stuff I just talked about, which was a whole heck of a lot in the comments down below on YouTube. So coming up next, you know, look, this team's not perfect. We've definitely seen that. The offense is clunky. Does that mean the priorities on the trade market change? They were going big man before. Do they still do that? I'll give you my answer to that. Coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we do that, though, this show, this episode of Locked On Pelicans is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you you feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like, you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it? Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. I'm an overthinker. Sometimes that just creates inaction or I create a bigger problem than what's actually in front of me and I should have just been taking action instead. So I've used therapy, I've actually used BetterHelp before to work through a lot of that stuff or just when life's hard and you need to let things out that you've been holding in, therapy can be really great for that too. So it's made a very positive difference in my life. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. The reason I like it so much is that it's entirely online. I don't have time to drive to a therapist's office, wait, go in, and then drive home when I'm doing basically three jobs. And BetterHelp is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You fill out a questionnaire, you get matched with a therapist. You don't like the therapist, you can just switch. It's super easy. So make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash lockedonmba to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash lockedonmba. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team, the number one Pelicans podcast. If you want to support the channel, become an everyday because we're every day. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's the tagline. If you really want to support the show, 
Join the Lockdown Pelicans Insiders group. I was talking with a bunch of y'all today in there, and it was a lot of fun. And insiders get their questions answered for sure on the show. Or I might just think it's a good question to answer it to you personally. That's a thing, too. So it's a lot of fun. I'm going to be putting all the trade rumors and everything that I hear in there, stuff that I wouldn't normally tweet out because this is much more private. So if you want to join, there's a 14-day free trial. It's $4.99 a month after that. Pretty easy. If you don't like it, that's okay. Cancel after the 14 days. No problem. The show's still free in five days a week for you. So let's get back to the Pelicans here. This was a question that came from the Insiders group. And also, if you're an insider, it doesn't show me your name necessarily. So feel free to message me your name on there. The, and also someone I think asked this on Twitter too. Given what we've seen and how clunky the offense is, we know they've been looking to maybe move on from Jonas Valanciunas. But would it be better to target a different area? Like if you can only make one trade, what should the priority be? If you're stack ranking them, what should it be? Oh, I sound like a business person saying stack rank, but you get what I mean. I don't think things change. A lot of people are saying point guard and I get why, you know, the offense hasn't clicked like you want. Maybe you just need someone to kind of organize all of that. I don't think you need to do that because your fail safe is point Zion. You're, you're capable of just running things through him kind of as like break glass in case of emergency, not just that, but at other times too, but he can just do that for you and you will, and, it, and it'll work. And I think that is kind of worth keeping in mind with all of that. So, Because of that, I don't think you need to change things. Brandon Ingram is very capable of doing all of this as well. The end of the season, when he's averaging over eight assists per game, he'd never had triple doubles before, and all of a sudden he starts putting them up. He's very clearly capable of being a dynamic playmaker. He's a very smart player, a very good passer, and his height and everything lets him see the court and have good court vision. I think he's embracing this role. It's just taking a little bit for him to get kind of back into the swing of things here. But we also know that the Pelicans need to get off to a really fast start. So if you make a trade right now for a guy like, say, Tyus Jones is on the Washington Wizards, who's like a very solid just point guard that you could bring off the bench, you could start him and he's going to give you like the numbers and organize the offense that you need. His numbers aren't flashy, partially because of his like minutes played in things. But overall, like this is a guy who per 36 minutes averaged 7.7 assists last year. The past three years have been over seven and a half assists per 36 minutes, actually past five years, including an eight assist season over 36 minutes, which he doesn't play. That's a useful player to have, like off the bench especially, but someone that could be a starter for you just to organize it. But here's the thing. You're not going to take any of those guys out of the starting lineup. Brandon Ingram's going to be in there. CJ's going to be in there. Zion's going to be in there. Your center is Jonas Valanciunas, you know, and then it comes down to Herb Jones. But would you put Trey Murphy in there? Would you put Tyus Jones in over Herb Jones? I don't, I don't think so. So given what they have on the roster, I just don't think it makes sense when it comes to like the starters and things like that. If you want him to replace Jose Alvarado off the bench because Jose is going to have this role, sure. Do you need to spend a ton of assets to do that just yet? I don't think so. You also maybe just want to see this play out a little bit. They're a little bit injured now that's affecting the rotation that maybe has, you know, something to do with turnovers. But if we were seeing Jose out there struggle, it might be an entirely different story. However, I think we need just a little more data on this. Again, I think it's a lot of, and I kind of hate this with the, <laughs> the Philadelphia 76ers and everything, but trust the process. But I think we need to trust that a little bit because the Pelicans seem to want to do that as well. And we all kind of have belief in this team that they can be really good. And I do think when you're looking at fit and things that could really elevate the team much more, I still think the offense is going to be fine. If they can cut down on these turnovers, I think they're really going to be okay because that makes the defense better too. And maybe they start forcing more turnovers with the defense back and set. So I'd rather upgrade the center position where there's just to me like an obvious, obvious thing of it's, it's not the right fit. And that's important at that position and what the Pelicans could do with it. So I'd still be targeting center. I would do this trade sooner rather than later on Gabe Feldman's podcast can drop tonight or tomorrow. I'm not sure when it's going to come out. We basically did a whole Pelicans preview. I'll tweet out the link and everything. I admire Gabe very much. Basically top sports law expert in the country. Also Tulane professor, which is just cool. Duke guy too. He's got like two or three degrees from Duke and he has Pelican season tickets. So I love that this guy loves the team here. You know, we were talking about you know, if you could upgrade, do you do it with JV and does it push you a little bit further? And I think it does. 
you know, this is a year that you want to try and justify making the luxury tax payment. Go and get your guy now and be good by the trade deadline to justify it. Can you make a move if you're 500 at the trade deadline to add pieces? I don't know. Maybe, but I don't know for sure. And if you make this move sooner rather than later, it gives you time. And this comes from Shemit Dua talking with me before a game. It gives you time to undo that mistake. I think that's important too. We talk about gathering data, wanting to see things. Make the trade now and it kind of gives you more cracks at getting it right and you have more data on everything. That's important. I would try and make a trade tomorrow if it were up to me and running this team. That doesn't really work that way. No one's getting, trades really don't happen like significant trades until the week of the NBA trade deadline. But if I were the Pelicans, I would not be feeling desperate, but kind of looking at the overall circumstances around everything and trying to work as smart as possible. The problem is there might just not be sellers out there. There's fewer sellers every year on the trade market because of the play-in tournament where more teams are in contention and kind of going for it, which, which is good for the NBA. I love the play-in tournament for this reason. So those are kind of the things that the team needs to kind of evaluate and think about right now. Not the easiest thing to answer with all of that. But I don't think it changes what they're trying to target. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think they should target a point guard? Do you still think they should try and upgrade the center position? Is there another way you want to go? The other thing to keep in mind with this too, this started of like, if you could pick one, it's an either or black and white thing. And it's not black and white. Like it's not black and white at all. There's shades of gray in this. And also you can make multiple trades. You make multiple trades. Tyus Jones is going to cost you that much. You can make that trade and try and upgrade the center position. But I do think... The Pelicans really should try and be going for it this year. The West is going to be open because every team is competitive in it. Doesn't mean you should bow out of that race entirely and maybe go throw your punches if you can. Let me know what you think in the comments down below on YouTube. Coming up next, roster moves. Exciting, not exciting. One of them maybe is exciting. One of them is kind of surprising too, and it was a little bit disappointing to see. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Today, I'm excited to tell you about Game Time, though. Game Time makes buying tickets easy. It can be a frustrating process. Do you know if you're going to get good seats? Do, are you getting the right price? Will the price change? Will it drop? Who knows? How are you supposed to figure out when to time this, when to do all of this? Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying your tickets. They're going to give you peace of mind. You can see the view from your seats for, before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. They show you the all-in price up front, so you know you're getting a great deal and there's no hidden fees when all of a sudden you're checking out. They also have the game time guarantee, which means you'll get the best price for your tickets. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Look, ticket prices for Pels games can kind of fluctuate. Same for the Saints, right, with the way their season's going. I just looked at game time because I'm thinking about going to the Saints game on Thursday and the prices were great. And now I can buy that knowing that drops later. Totally cool because game time is going to credit me the difference. So I'm covered no matter what. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem code locked on NBA, L O C K E D O N NBA for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday for you all breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team, the number one Pelicans podcast. If you want to support the channel, become an everydayer. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everydayers listen Monday through Friday. I love it when y'all come up to me. I didn't get your name, man, but I caught you in the elevator on Monday. You said you listen every day and we're an everydayer and I loved it. That meant the world to me. Thank you so much. You know who you are from that because you're listening to the show because you are an everydayer. And I love that. If you see me out, say hi. If you want to comment down below in the YouTube comments and you don't know what to say and you're an everydayer, tell me you're an everydayer. Y'all are the best. Your passion makes this job fun. And I'm happy to be here with y'all doing this with you and the community that is around this team. And that's due to you and your passion. And if you want to support the channel another way, the Lockdown Pelicans Insiders Group is right there. All you got to do, put in your phone number. You get to text me. That's what it is. I text you back directly to your phone. You got questions? Shoot it my way there. I don't respond on Twitter as much. This is where you can catch me, where you can ask me things. Whatever it is you want, send me a text. I'm excited to talk with y'all. $4.99 a month, but there's a 14-day free trial. If you don't like it, no worries. 
just cancel and keep watching the show because we're still here five days a week. Okay. Pelicans made some roster moves the past couple of days. We need to catch up on all of these. I've never talked about them much because, look, they're largely inconsequential. These are training camp guys that maybe will end up in Birmingham with the G League team, the squadron, but they're not going to make the NBA roster. And look, as much as they've had success with some of the two-way guys, they have Kaiser Gates and Darion Sebron on one right now. Najee Marshall was a two-way guy. Jose Alvarado was a two-way guy. They've had a lot of success with these. Um, Kenrich Williams was one before as well. They've had success developing these guys. And for a small market team, I think that's really important. So they made some moves. They still have an open two-way spot left. You get three this year as opposed to two of years past. And they're still trying to kind of figure it out. We've had our eye on a couple of guys and hasn't worked out with them. The Pelicans cut Landers Nolly Jr. the other day, which was a little bit surprising given that he did well enough in summer league, but just wasn't getting run. And I think maybe they just wanted him to be free to potentially find a better landing spot for him and kind of do right by him. As he went out, they signed Isaiah Brockington. This is a training camp deal as far as I'm aware. They've had their eye on Brockington for like two years now. They brought him in for a pre, uh, pre-draft workout last year and he got injured towards ACL, I believe. So they did right by him, signed him to do a two-way deal for a few days and then released him. But it was someone they were very clearly high on that I think they looked to potentially take in the second round or as an undrafted guy and that unfortunate injury happened. You know, it's a wing player with decent size, has somewhat of a three ball in him. We'll see if, you know, it amounts to anything. I think you might see him on the G League squadron this coming year, but it could be okay. He played two games with the squadron last year, um, but his senior year at Iowa State, he earned all Big 12 first team honors, 17 points, 6.8 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 1.3 steals. He's been pretty good overall. We'll see. The Pelicans like him. You know, they've done a good job developing a lot of these guys, so... You know, it's worth taking the flyer if you truly believe that maybe he could be something. There's no risk involved in all of this. The other day, though, they did let a guy go that we were maybe looking at could get that third two-way deal, and that was Liam Robbins. This was the center out of Vanderbilt that we'd all had kind of our eye on. Seven-footer, good rim protection, decent three-point shooter, two average over like three blocks in college. And we'd hope maybe that could be the answer for like cheap rim protection that the team doesn't quite need, but if you can get for dirt cheap, not a bad thing. But they ended up waving him. He didn't play in summer league because he was injured, had a stress reaction in his leg. So we haven't seen him in training camp, haven't seen him in preseason. You know, maybe he can end up making a G League team somewhere, but the injuries have really kind of derailed the start of his career. Former SEC Defensive Player of the Year, much like Herb Jones was. I think they were hoping to maybe strike lightning twice there with everything. You know, in a corresponding move, as they say, they signed Jalen Crutcher to kind of replace his spot. And this is the Pelicans just taking shots on guys. Crutcher, you know, hasn't been, let me pull up his numbers here. Um, You know, anything amazing. You know, played 57 games the past two seasons with the Hornets G League affiliate. 15.8 points, three rebounds, 5.1 assists in 33 minutes of action. Shot 43% from three. Played Dayton. You know, okay, Maybe. But it sounds like he's more of maybe a G League guy than anything else. But there's a point guard you could kind of use. So we'll see if he ends up making the Birmingham squadron, if he could end up getting a two-way deal, something like that. You know, the Pelicans, I wouldn't say need to sign a guy to a two-way deal. If there's no one you particularly like right now, though, they should. So keep an eye on it. You know, maybe it's going to be a guy like Crutcher. Maybe it's going to be Isaiah Brockington. Those are names to keep an eye on, but I think the Pelicans are really trying to kind of find the right guy for that. So they want to bring some guys into training camp, give them some run, give them a test with everything and see what ends up happening. So is there, is there someone you want them to sign to the final two-way deal? Let me know in the YouTube comments down below. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We're, we're everywhere and on YouTube. Comment down below on YouTube and tell a friend about the show. Friends ask interesting Pelicans questions. I get them all the time from my friends. And I'm like, come on, come on. Listen to my show and you don't need to worry about Dwight Howard or some of these other guys and things. So when your friends ask that, just point them to Locked On Pelicans. We'll we'll set them straight here. The number one Pelicans podcast, of course. So support the channel any way you can. This has been the Locked On Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Live show, I should have said this way earlier as I'm losing my voice really quickly. Uh, we're going to go live after the game on Tuesday night. Second it goes, it ends. We'll be here answering your questions, recapping the game like we did Thursday. That was a lot of fun. 
Hopefully the Pelicans get it together. Not expecting a lot of the starters. We'll talk more about the season, answer your questions. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all then. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with y'all tomorrow.